I'm currently standing on a representation of one of the 76,000 soccer fields worth of forest cut down every year. That's more than 53 of these every single second. But before we get into all these stats and visualizations, I need to break down what we'll be covering in today's video and where I got my data from. First off, there's a lot of different ways you can measure deforestation. Some look at primary forests, others look at both primary forests and forests that have been replanted then cut down, which are called secondary forests. For the sake of this video, we'll be looking at both primary and secondary forests because in my opinion, they both matter. There's also varying data on deforestation since biomass measurement systems are still relatively new, so I did my best to compare results from multiple different data sets and align the dates to the best of my abilities. Fortunately, in the future, we should have much better data on biomass as we just launched a new biomass satellite. My dad was actually one of the engineers working on the reflectors. Finally, I want to break down what's causing deforestation, how it affects not just the world, but also individuals, and of course, if it's fixable. So back to the beginning, taking the average between 2015 and 2020, 21 mega hectares of forest were destroyed per year. That's equivalent to the base of Mount Everest, 210 times, or the area of Greece and Syria combined. The biggest contributor to this is forestry, which accounts for around 30% of global forest loss. That's about 63 Mount Everest. The biggest country contributing is Russia, which from 2001 to 2023 has cut down 83.7 mega hectares of trees. That's an area larger than Turkey or about 7.5 Ohio's, if that's the measurement system you fancy. Another statistic I found particularly interesting is the tree loss due to wildfires. This is starting to become the leading cause of deforestation, and while it's technically a natural event due to climate change, it has become increasingly more threatening with fire season becoming virtually year-round in most places. In 2023, it became the leading contributor, destroying 9 mega hectares of forest, roughly 90 Mount Everest. Fortunately, we're not completely losing this much forest every year since we have to account for the forests that regrow. This is where the net change metric comes in play. From 2000 to 2020, the world experienced a net change of negative 101 mega hectares, which is about 5 mega hectares lost per year. Though the number is likely much higher, since the measurement system unintentionally accounts for both natural forests as well as plantations that have trees over 5 meters. Even still, that's a forest the size of Costa Rica being cut down every single year. All this deforestation is having some serious implications, some we all know about like the additional 2.7 gigatons of CO2 that's released each year, and the habitat loss for countless species, many of which are not found anywhere else in the world. If you live near these forests being destroyed, you can expect worse air quality, destabilized soil, and most detrimental, a broken water cycle. These altered water cycles arise when there's changes in evaporation and runoff patterns. This not only affects regional water supplies and the quality of water, but it can also affect rain patterns. If rain patterns are affected, we get long droughts. These droughts can lead to less food for animals and less water for crops, which then disrupts global trade, especially when you end up in scenarios like Mexico who makes 30% of all avocado production worldwide. If Mexico underwent a drought, prices for avocados and other products could really hike up. So even if you don't care for the environment and aren't worried about the long-term effects of climate change, there's still a lot of risk around this when you take away something that's been around for hundreds of millions of years. So with that being said, is this reversible? The world fell 21% short of deforestation targets in 2022, so it's not looking all too good, but there are still countries on track. Tropical Asia is actually the only region currently on track to halt impacts of deforestation by 2030. On the surface, it's just a matter of putting some heavier regulations on deforestation. In 2021, global banks financed $119 billion to deforestation. If we regulate deforestation more, we can cut off these outside exploitations of forests, which could have some major impacts on reducing deforestation. There is still a lingering problem, though. With more people in the world, we need more food, and to get food, you need land, whether it be for crops or animals. This problem is harder to fix. Of course, there is vertical farming, but that's not exactly economical and they grow a very limited selection of crops. We also need these tropical climates where these forests reside for a lot of our crops like oil palms and soybeans. We simply can't grow them elsewhere. I believe the best approach to this would be to adopt a more traditional land management practice. These methods can help restore soil nutrients, reduce the risk of erosion, and improve overall land stability. By revitalizing the soil, the farmers can enhance crop productivity, allowing them to yield more from less land. Lastly, we can find other ways to find our resources. That's actually what the next video is going to be about, the resources of our solar system. If you're interested in contributing or want to add your own opinion on deforestation, please join the Discord in the description.